Good day, good day. It's another day. We, we ended yesterday right here. Welcome to today. We're in the exact same place. Old blue is all ready to go. I just gotta close up the hood, button it up, get in there, start her up, warm her up, hook onto that trailer right there, and head over to Kenora. We gotta be there for tomorrow morning, but I wanna get there tonight because I wanna be first in line tomorrow. Remember last time we tried this and I was like third or fourth, even though I try, I'm gonna try harder this time. You guys are setting the bar so high. Ah, oh, you guys, uh, I gotta try harder to be the best. So let's, let's see what we can do. Let's get to Kenora tonight. Let's go to bed. Let's get up real early and let's get to the gate first. Let's see what happens. We're going to get loaded tomorrow and we're going to get unloaded tomorrow. Once I'm unloaded, I head on down to Minneapolis area. I got to reload the next day in Shakopee, Minnesota, which is Minneapolis, uh, Southwest Minneapolis. And then that load's going to take me back up here to Winnipeg. And I told the load gods, I said, I'm going to want to turn and burn. Keep me going. Keep me going. I've had two weeks off of unscheduled vacation. I wasn't supposed to have this time off, but here we are. And now I'm not getting desperate, but I'm getting determined. I need some miles, I need some freight. Let's keep that trailer loaded, let's keep it going. Let's keep those wheels turning. There's gonna be a lot of truck and stuff coming up on this channel soon, so hit that subscribe button so you don't miss it. Let's get on with today's vlog, let's get to Kenora. Yesterday's video, we talked about putting the cooler in here. It's my new Bodega fridge cooler. It's a compressor fridge in the shape of a cooler. We did see in yesterday's video that it does fit underneath my bed, but I decided to use that storage space for water instead. But, and my tools. So waters and tool, waters and tool, uh, bleh, water and tools under the bed. And I got my cooler right here because I need to be able to open it anyways to get to it, right? There's two compartments. You can have a fridge and a freezer, but I have them both set to both be a fridge. I could take this divider and baskets out as well, but I kind of like the organization that it gives me this way. I can sort of keep things separate. And Apple's gonna have to eat these before I cross into the US. Don't let me forget, crossing into the US tomorrow, I have to eat those before we cross. My water's in there and a bunch of leftovers and food over there, some schmofot. Mm. It's a Mennonite dish. It's delicious, noodles and fat pretty much. Yeah, we'll put that down there and uh, keeps it at about two degrees Celsius. It's a little cooler right now. I set it to be a little bit cooler, but uh, should be good. Has a safety battery saver on there as well that I explained yesterday too. So when I don't have the truck running, if the battery level goes too low, shuts the cooler and fridge off so that it doesn't drain it to the point where I can't start the truck again. Everything else gets unplugged for night and everything else gets turned off. I'm gonna leave the fridge on. I don't, want my, I don't want my food to go bad. And it doesn't run the whole time either. It just runs when it needs to, right? So if the truck batteries do go below a certain level, the fridge will just turn off so that in the morning I can start the truck at least. You know, it's better to have food go bad than to be in the middle of nowhere and have dead batteries. It'd be expensive to have someone to come out there and boost you. Or unless you carry like a nice little booster pack with you, you could do that too. But it's, it's nice to have that safety feature. I don't think it's gonna need it because every truck has a fridge in it nowadays, except for this one. Now it does, now it has a fridge. 
and every truck no 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 one has dead batteries in the morning because they left their fridge on overnight right that's not a thing unless the batteries are bad or something or connections are bad so we should be good so anyways i'm gonna be leaving home here now we're hooked up to the trailer let's go to kenora i have a load to pick up there tomorrow morning we want to be first in line first in line we'll see what we can do see if we can go find a parking spot off we go head up to trans canada and head eastbound hopefully this rain rains itself out tonight so that tomorrow we get some nice sunshine in the morning and tie down our load in some comfortable weather but if it's raining whatever we keep working right because we can work in the rain
evening out here. Perfect temperature. Nice and cool. Not cold, but nice and cool. First things first, are we straight in the lines? Are we straight? I'd say we're pretty close. Good enough, eh? I don't like to use the words good enough. I like to say it's great. I like to say it's perfect. But sometimes, you know, it may not be absolutely perfect, but it's good enough. So, remember how I was saying my old GoPro Hero 10 had pretty bad low light capabilities? I'm looking at the screen beside the lens here right now. That's why I, I'm trying to look at you guys, but the screen's right beside you, right here. And the low light capabilities seem to be way better on this GoPro 10 than the old GoPro. Did they change something? Wow, that, that's actually really good. We'll see how it is in editing, but uh, the GoPro, you know how I was talking to you about stabilizing my video with my Sony camera? I had to pay this, uh, buy this program that's like 150, 200 bucks a year to stabilize that footage, but it's really good fo footage, has really great depth of field. 
but it's a big bulky camera big bulky camera these cameras are like pocket size like i'm just holding you guys here can you see in the shadow like look look at the top of my hand right there in my shadow like oops there's my hand grab the camera very small right very small and it has that stabilization feature built right in so i don't even have to do anything post-production it's already stabilized i can bounce you guys around like this all i want and you might see a little bit of bouncing but it stabilizes it right in the camera and it does everything that camera does in a small package but the thing about the the sony camera is it takes great pictures and has great depth of field it is a way better camera way better camera uh, it's just it's interesting to see the different technologies from the different manufacturers gopro is for action cameras the best don't buy don't you don't even waste your money on any of those cameras that look like gopros they're like knockoffs like chinese knockoffs or something like don't waste your time in that get the gopro it's it's still made in china if you want something that's made in china but it's it's engineered and designed in america and of course they put it together over there because that's just the way the world works and that's 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 fine one hour that's fine but different technologies different cameras different manufacturers have different pros and cons and i really love gopros i don't think i could do my vlogs the way i do long term without at least one gopro in my arsenal i used to have like three two eights and a ten and over the years they've all disappeared before that i had the original hero like when i first started vlogging i had the original gopro it was just gopro hero it, they didn't even call it hero one it was just hero i had that one it was awful <laughs> But it was the best of the time, right? Now they're up to 10, 11. Are they on GoPro 12 already? And they have GoPro Max? Like, these cameras have come a long way. I have to have at least one in my arsenal to be able to do my vlogs. Because these cameras, I can hook up to anywhere. I can get really good action shots. Anyways, enough talking about behind the scenes. I like to tell you guys what kind of equipment I use and what kind of cameras I use. I get those questions a lot. And uh, I, I think it's interesting. It's a part of how... I put these together for you. I've been doing it a long time and it's just nice to know sometimes how it gets done. So this is where we're going to sleep tonight. Should be good. So the last time we slept here, we slept in this corner spot over here. Now that's usually where I would park, right? And you know me, I only want one neighbor. But that leaves that side completely off into the bush and sort of might invite people to come mess around on the passenger side of my truck here right but now that i'm in this spot you have that light shining right down on this side of the truck and you have the lights from the building over here and that one back there as well lighting up this side of the truck so both sides of the truck and the back of it from that one are all lit up once the sun goes down completely and that's important to me. I want to be in the light. I don't want to be in a dark corner. I mean, it's, it's Kenora, right? But it's Kenora. Should be fine, but you know, there's troublemakers everywhere. You, know, you, just, you sort of always just gotta watch your back. Just park in a good spot, safe spot. The best you can do. I've been driving for a long time and I've been fortunate enough never to have anything happen. Knock on wood, knock on wood. But I think a part of that is that I'm very careful where I park. I want to protect my truck and I want to protect me. Yeah, I'm not sure if people know that these parking spots exist here or not, but I've never seen another truck here. They painted lines just for us and they paved it. It used to be a gravel lot and it used to be a Husky. Now it's a co-op, and they painted lines for us. It's super nice. Nobody knows about it, so shh, don't tell anybody or I won't be able to get a parking spot here. So anyways, let's go to bed. Tomorrow is uh, going to be a big day. going to be first in line. We're going to be first in line. We're going to try our best. And then uh, we're going to take that load on down to Brainerd. We're going to get there before end of business day so that we can unload tomorrow yet. And then after we're done unloading, we're going to book it down to Minneapolis area and sleep there for the night so that we're ready to reload in Shakopee the following day. So it's going to be a... Go.
go, go, go kind of day. It'll be a full day. It'll be a full day of work. So I hope you join me. I uh, will be right here on YouTube. Take care, everybody, and drive safe. <laughs>